The title of this video is Michael S. Jenkins Explains GANs Time and Price Squared. This is a very important concept and lies at the root of every single thing W.D. GAN ever did with a trend line or with a planet. He was constantly looking for that one point when time or longitude was equal to price. One of the least understood phrases is time and price squared or time and price are equal. W.D. Gann popularized these phrases in his market courses, but few people actually understand what they mean. They have often been associated with a 45 degree angle, since it is the diagonal of a square and as such represents one unit of time for one unit of price. So every point along the diagonal is one unit over in time and one unit up in price. Two over, two up, three over, three up, etc. We use this phrase time and price squared since only at the equality of time and price can markets reverse. This is the fundamental principle of GAN that markets only reverse when time and price are at equality. Countless thousands draw hand charts with one by one grids and precise 45 degree angles and software engineers advertise the absolute precision of their scaled charts, but most of this is wrong. If you look at this chart here we see every single diagram is basically drawn with a 45 degree angle. It doesn't look like a 45 degree angle, but by our definition of one unit of time and one unit of price all of these could be said to be 45 degree angles. It is this relationship of time and price which is so important. And this is where Gann's theory of reversals come in when you have a time and a price that are absolutely uh, equivalent. Have you ever stopped to think about why a trend line actually works? We see trend lines all the time and uh, it hits a trend line, the price, and it bounces up off it. Hits it again, it bounces up off it. But if we really look at them, we see there's a downward direction, and it hits it. There's some kind of equality here, and it bounces off again. So every time it hits the trend line, you are at a price and time equality. Now let's not think about right now whether or not this is a 45 degree angle. But if it's working, there is some proportion that, what, that has an equality of time and price, otherwise it wouldn't work. Obviously, if you go over 300 days and you're not up 300 points, it doesn't seem to be a true statement. But it really is. But first, we're going to have to examine the concept of time. You know, for a million years, man has associated time with planetary movement. Usually the sun or moon or combination cycles of sun and moon. The ancients did monumental work in constructing the Great Pyramid, Stonehenge, the Mayan Pyramids, and countless other structures to get precise planetary movements in an effort to catalog time passage. Ian always referred in his courses to trend lines of one point per day, one point per week, and one point per month as typical trend lines, or what he more commonly called them, average momentum lines, or trend line averages. You must keep in mind that there are two distinct energies that can be tracked. The unit of time and time and price calculations can come from either of these. Pure numbers, like a top of 3,000 moving 3,000 minutes, 3,000 hours, 3,000 days, or other fixed units without regard to weekends or holidays, but just trading bars. This is numerology. The more common use is geometric and this varies slightly and is of planetary origin, like the ancient recordings of the movement of the sun, the moon, and the planets. Since the planets are elliptical in their orbits and they vary in speed within the location of their orbits, these time periods vary on a day-to-day -day basis and the trend lines created from them are more like Gann's average momentum line. But Gann used the planets as precise timekeepers so the representations previously of various sloped triangles all equating to one unit of time, which is planetary longitude, and one unit of price are correct 45 degree relationships. 
if a top price is $73 and you move the moon or any other planet 73 degrees longitude then time and price will be equal and you will see a change in trend. Pure numerology works well but so does perfect geometry which lies at the basis of planetary movements. This next chart was featured in my July 12, 2019 Stock Cycles Forecast newsletter clearly showing the potential for a plunge near August 1st uh, based on the geometry of this chart where we see some support angles connecting the lows and the support arc is accelerating up into a parabolic and it was about to go maximum bullishness in this time zone where the market would normally top out and go plunging down. Here we see the outcome and uh, it's up to date as of September 6th. Note the straight down crash predicted on August 1st actually came about exactly at the intersection of the Vesica Pisces here. The supporting, the supporting arc down from below culminated in a high and the resistance arc was coming down and we had a trend line through this Vesica Pisces right here intersecting at 2820 and one coming up from the lower area up through 2820 and the market plunged right to our 2820 point and started to rally. Now the key pivot will be this 2967 mathematical point here. Now normally on this cycle since the bullish arc had culminated you would expect it to fail similar to this pattern which also had a straight down plunge there at that intersection point and then you went sideways and then you waterfall down to this arc which would be down here on December 3rd. But as long as you're making higher bottoms the technical trend is still bullish and it's possible to redraw these angles off a little bit different and have this arc culminating at a high on December 3rd which ties in more with the planetary uh, combinations would call for a top in early December. So the key will we be whether or not we break a swing low. If you ever go back under 2820 you're likely going to go down to a low and have another leg just like this otherwise the length of this leg will be added to the top and you'll have a projection somewhere right up in there. I might add that the best time to use the geometry is when you can tie it in with the planetary things. Usually that's the key of a good uh, forecast, a confluence of the geometry of, of the chart showing the footprints of the planetary energies and the actual planetary aspects giving the culmination date. On July 31st, right up at the top here, the market was resting at least a e mini at 3030 was the price and Mars was 150 degrees to Neptune which represent panic and fear. Now if you take cycles from that 150 Neptune and you add 8 times 360 you get a price equivalent of that 150 aspect of 3030. So the 3030 price was culminating at that translation because of a Mars Neptune angle and as soon as that hit it broke and fell down to the mathematics. My previous uh, YouTube video again Astro shows the uh, another geometric approach using the Mars Jupiter converging triangles in the 1948 soybean chart. But each of these shows that the prices themselves will translate into the angles or longitude of the planets on the key dates that the geometry suggests. In many of my other books and courses and videos you've uh, probably seen this picture before where I say that time and price are interchangeable and the low in 2002 was a price of 768.50. But since price equals time, we can say that there's a time component in there of 7685. Remember, when we translate these things in the subconscious minds of men, there are no decimal points. So 76850 is the same as 7.68 or 76.8 or 768.50. So the decimal point can be moved around. In this case, according to GAN's usual one point per day, week, or month. I've chosen months and I used 76.85 months using the average days in a month and it gave me the exact number of days until the next bear market low on March 6, 2009. Now you may have wondered why I chose months for the relevant time period 
but that was a disguise like Gann did with his one point per day, week, and month. These represented average planetary movement cycles with one point per month, the exact Saturn movement over a year if anchored near the month of August. This will vary slightly due to retrogrades and direct, but usually near the July-August period, they come out to an exact count of 12 degrees per year, or 12, 24, 36, 48 uh, for each year down the road. And in this case, I was using my Saturn trend line, and I knew as the market headed down, it was going to hit that Saturn trend line and most likely bounce. On the date of the low, although it did translate into 666, as we'll see in a minute with something else, the Saturn trend line was down here around uh, 668, I believe, or 680, uh, and it was going to bounce off of that marker. Bouncing off a trend line, however, doesn't reverse the entire bull or bear market. You usually need price and time equality, or at least a, a major proportion of time and price equality. To uh, get a major reversal. So let's see an example uh, going up to the 2007 top to see how this worked. Here's an example using Saturn from the 2002 low up to the 2007 top and I'm using various trend lines on Saturn of uh, four uh, uh, points per degree, uh, four degrees per point, eight degrees per point, uh, 12 degrees per point, um, and that one actually hits the high tick here. So we're using like a GAN fan, but we're doing the number of, uh, excuse me, points per degree as trend lines. And uh, we see at the top, the square root of three, and if you looked at uh, my earlier videos on the science of numbers, you'll see that all major proportions in the stock market are the square roots of two, square roots of three, and the square roots of five. And they'll show up all the time. So if we take the square root of 3 times the 65.48 degrees, that Saturn moved from this low to this date, we multiply it out, we get 113, we add cycles of 360 degrees of a circle to get us to the relevant price area, and we find out that's equivalent to 1553, which was really the exact top right here. As well, as since it was a 12 by 1 angle, 12 times that price equals 1554. So we had some proportions that were very strong here all coming out and you were resting right on the trend line from the low. Note also how from the first top, which was the theoretical top that year, this one was a five year anniversary of the low, but then when the market broke, the Federal Reserve pulled out all the stops, cut their interest rates, and they jammed the market up to here. But note this trend line as it approached and you hit the trend line again, you squared out this high here right on the trend line on the date and that reversed the market and turned it into a bear market. My previous books showed how you would have gotten the final low uh, regardless once you were going down using the tangent of 30. Uh, the tangents are explained in my Square the Range Trading System books, how you can use sines, tangents, cosines with prices. But the top at 1576, you take the tangent of 30 and subtract that from the high and you get the low. So one of our principles has always been the time and price of future bull and bear markets beginning and endings will be somehow incorporated into the final price of the high or low. Usually at major highs and lows though all the planets will come together and in the uh, uh, March of 2009 cycle it was primarily a Mars and Jupiter conjunction. Um, here's my little program again. You get this with the volume one of my planetary uh, books. And uh, we see here Mars and Jupiter uh, have an angle where they're going to a conjunction, a zero angle, which hits sometime between the night of the 6th and the 7th. And it occurred where the individual longitude, here's the Mars longitudes, and here's the Jupiter longitudes. And if you subtract the longitudes from each other, you get the angle between them. So on the day the angle was zero, or a conjunction, and this is helio, by the way, um, they were sitting at 308. So we translate the longitude of the planets, or the angles of the planets, we translate it into numbers, and we get 308 plus 360 gives us a target of 668 versus our extreme low tick that day of 666. 
So this was an example of the, the Mars-Jupiter conjunction translating into the low price on the low price day. The usual way we find out about price squares are through the use of trend lines and we square out things. Gan said there were three things you can square. You can square the high, you can square the low, or you can square the range. So from a high to a low, most of the times we square a range. Let's say you had a, 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 a low of 50 and a high of 75, the range would be 25 between them. So the lowest number that would square out first would be the range, and then the low would square out, and then the high would square out. Here's an example using trend lines. This is a proprietary trend line I only teach in my uh, uh, seminars. But many other trend lines will work. Certainly all planetary trend lines work perfectly. And there are a few other ones like my Jenkins 2 trend lines that work. But I'm using this one uh, because it, it demonstrates fairly well what the principle is here. Starting at our low, we have put on a trend line. And when the trend line goes up and it hits the previous high, this is a bear market drop, let's say. Uh, when it hits the high, by law, there should be an equality of time and price along this trend line and you should get a reversal in trend. The market had been going up, you square out, by law it has to go down. So where does it go down to? It goes down until you get the next square out. The next square out after the range would be the square of the low. Now if you had a big chart you could start at zero and go up and when it got to 140 you'd be squaring out the low. If you don't want to change your chart that way, what we do is we double this range here. We go from 140 up to 281. And we can use the same trend line and go up to the price of 281. And that would be the same as a zero angle starting down uh, under the low and coming up to hit 140 at that point in time. And then you get a square out. And if you've been going down, you have to go square out and go up. The beauty of actually doing zero angles like Ann did is you will find these correspondence here that you didn't notice. They will follow up here rather than just get a point in time that looks like a low. You'll also see some of the mathematics of the trend line coming up. And then you will finally get to the point where the zero angle squares the high. And at that point again, time and price are squared and you must change your direction and you'll be going down. Now trend lines work well, but the best things of course are astrological trend lines and they're much easier to use. So if we have a high here at 243 and a low of uh, 141 let's say, the range would be 102. So rather than having to draw the trend lines and stuff, all we have to do is move our planets the range to uh, 102. So here's my little program again over here and I punched in planet Mercury and uh, starting with the uh, origin date and I take the distance it's moved and it's moved 102 degrees right on to this date. And note that this date is the exact high. So it has squared out then and by law we have to change direction at that point. We don't have to wait for a trend line or something to break a week or two later. We know at that point the uptrend is over and they have to be going down. So this is, a, this is an easy way of using planets. You can use the moon, you can use Mercury, Venus, all of them will give you various uh, trend line square outs. Some will be much bigger than others and some will be the small little three days, three weeks, three months, but every one of them in turn will reverse the market as it goes. Note two down here the uh, high price was 243 and if time and price are equal well the 243 would be equal to a longitude of 243 so if we went through my program and looked up the longitudes and we found out the date when mercury hit 243 it would be this exact low that is when the time and the price and the time or longitude were equal and you must reverse. Now note there's a double bottom here. This double bottom is because of this next top that needed to be squared out. This next top, uh, you know, I don't see the price on here, maybe it's a 265. So you'd have to go another 25 points or so and that's what happened here. This distance there is another 20 or so 
points of longitude on Mercury and this was the extreme high in this whole time frame so that extreme high was uh, squared out on this low as the extreme low and then you went straight up again right after that so we will find it is the converting of the prices to time in most cases and here's a price for example 1617 and what we want to do is subtract the circle of 360, 360, 360 until we get a leftover price within 360 degrees and in this case it's 177 so that's the price but we're going to say price is equal to longitude so 177 is both the price and it will be a longitude we then go over to 9-4 September 4th and we find the longitude of the excuse me the longitude of the the Sun over here was 177 and then you reversed and you went up again the price at this top occurred where the longitude was 162 and the price equivalent was 250 so we could either move it 250 degrees to this little reversal or we could go to the date when 250 uh, degrees longitude was that date which is this high whereas the date here the longitude was 162 so we could move the longitude another 162 or we would now be at 324 and that would also give us a major low if we take this low right here the price of 1307 we convert that to a number within 366 or 360 we get 227 as a longitude now that longitude won't hit until November 19th off the price scale so what I did to find a major harmonic of 27 uh, 227 I took one half of it to get 11350 I looked up when that hits and that hits on July 16th was one half of that and July 16th was this major top right there so we are seeing every one of these peaks, the highs and lows, the little reversals, the big reversals. Here's an anniversary date again of the top when it returns back to 162 every year. Um, we find out on the dates when the uh, price or the time is equivalent, we get reversals in the market. Most people miss completely that these numbers converted also have a complement of 360. Um, so 360 the price over here 250 price equals 250 longitude but what about the leftover what about the 360 minus the 250 we have 110 left over in the circle well from the high price here if you move the Sun 110 degrees you get the exact low so oftentimes the complement of your price equals time equation will give you the next low or major high. Um, also the actual longitude of 110 which was the uh, complement here we had moved it 110 to get this low but the actual date when the longitude is 110 is in early July remember 90 degrees is June straight up on June 20th so July 12th is the 112th degree and in this case it had it had been the complement of this top here gave you this top right here this low by the way here was a price of 1307 which translates into 227 and the complement of that is 133 so the longitude on 85 is 133 and that was where this little break bottomed then it started to base and go up again these calculations are easily done with my little program I give you all in the uh, first volume of the planetary things. You just put in a, a planet or a pair of planets. It gives you the listing for the longitudes and how many degrees they have moved. So you can either move the sun a certain distance or you can look up the date when a longitude is hit. And then th that way it's very easy going forwards and backwards on these little things to find out where there's going to be an equality of time and price. And of course, you can find out much more at my website, Stock Cycles Forecast. Besides the other 11 books and courses, I have the three major planetary books, including the ones with all the programs. They're about $400 each. If you buy them all as one big package, they're $1,000. But you can find all that information on the website. 
So let's look a little more into this translations of price into longitudes and the equality of price in time. In most cases, although you often won't see it, on the high or low day, um, it would be a direct plant translation into a planet. For instance, on, on Tesla here, um, the high day, although it had a high of 291, the low on that day was 281. And Pluto was sitting at exactly 281 degrees. So there was a direct degree to point translation of the planet Pluto on the high day. Also on the high day, <coughs> Venus was sitting at uh, uh, 161 longitude. And if we took the high that day, you can use the low too, but I'm just example the high price of 291 and looked up the future date when Venus got to 291, it would come out right here. Or if we took Venus's longitude on the high day and moved it the number of degrees it was on that high day, it has moved 161 degrees, you're now on the low day. So you will often find many planets all coming together on the highs or lows. I'm only showing two here so as not to confuse you. But every one of these highs and lows or history will be a different planet squaring out the numbers of the key high and low prices. The implication of this is also that uh, support and resistance in time will be support and resistance in price. So here's a big low down here where the price was 285 and the sun was 296. They're very similar. Maybe it wanted to go to 296, but there was a sell program. There's always a little slippage around, so you've got to give it a little bit of room. <clears throat> but we could take either of these and say, okay, the theoretical price was 296, or the theoretical longitude was 285, and we can add our, our 360 multiples to get our price level. So based on the longitude, on the day of the low. We add 360 and 360 and 360 and we get these resistance areas with the red line. If we go ahead and use the actual price of 285 and we add the 360 multiples we get these various other ones. But we can see that from this one point in time it is naturally generating ahead of time where the resistance and support levels are going to be. So this helps us a good bit on long-term forecasting or long-term portfolio liquidation when we get to these various uh, big support and resistance zones. Now up to now we've used the longitude of individual planets as the time. But what about pairs? What about the angle, the separation of the degrees between two planets? That works too. Here's Mars and Jupiter on the high day Mars and Jupiter were 71.37 degrees apart from each other. If we take the high and we move Mars and Jupiter until that angle increases by 7137, we get this point right here, which is another big blast off in the chart. Again, we can do an easy calculation of how that takes place. We put in the top date, we put in our Mars and Jupiter. This is a GO1 marked as a pair. So here's the Mars going forward, here's the Jupiter, and here's the angle between them going forward. And this from our origin date, this is the running total. And we find out that it comes to 7141 degrees on this date, which coincidentally would be a double of the 7140 because we were starting on the date where the origin angle was 7140. So now it's going to be twice that longitude on that date. So it's very quick to, to scroll ahead or back and find out where these angles are. Here again we see various angles and angle returns. Here's Chicago Mercantile Exchange, CME, and the angle between Saturn and Neptune, which is very important for that particular exchange. So over here we had a top made when the angle was 103.6. And do the retrogrades and direct these planets, especially with two planets. One could go retrograde, the other would go direct, and another one goes retrograde. This guy comes out of retrograde. There's various combinations where you can go back and forth through the same angle several times over the course of a year. So when it came back to 103.60, you had another top right here in a plunge. Over here, where we had a dramatic upsurge, it occurred when the price was 84.90. 
Well, if we treat 8490 as if it was an angle and not a price, and we look ahead to see if the Saturn and Neptune is going to reach an angle of 8490, we find it does right here, and it's a low. And then we find it hits it here again, and it's another low. And we find it hits it here for the last time, and it's a very explosive low. So here we have three translations of the 84 90 price as a low and each time the angle hits it it generates another big low. I might add that in the middle here looks like the beginning of a big fold back on either side. In the middle there was a direct translation. The price was 101 and the angle between Saturn and Neptune was 101. So there was the perfect equality right here and this was like the peak up and then down and kind of a full back on either side to these various angles so you always want to watch for the perfect equality of price equals time as being a major pivot in the chart pattern here too the angles can give support and resistance again at the bottom down here we can take the individual longitude of Saturn like 242 and uh, we can add the price to it. The price added to Saturn's longitude is 527. That gives us this resistance area here. We can take Helio Mars on the low day. That was 2757 plus 360 of a circle. Gives you resistance at 387 right here. Here's the Mars Jupiter. The angle between them was 137. We add the low price to it. We get 422 it shows up as this major level of 422. Uh, on the Saturn one note, there was a huge gap right to that price when we got to the 527. The longitude on that day plus the price gives us support and resistance targets. At the top over here, the Saturn-Pluto angle was 37.54. We add our low price, then we add another 360 because we've gone above that, so we get to 682.54. So we will see the market is very specific and it remembers the numerology of these highs and lows where the numbers, the price, and the longitude are equal. And that's why we can add 360 multiples, we can add the price to the longitude, to the angle, and we will get support and resistance when we get to those various levels. Here's a pretty good example of how they're interchangeable time and price and also why GAN used the square of 9 so much. Note down here the Sun was a longitude of 3879. You can see it's in early May, about a month after the first day of spring, which is zero every year. And we can clearly see the low was in the 50s. I show it to be 5650. So in your square of 9, you would usually take a price and do the square root plus 2, and that would give you the next rung and you'd usually have one price and the target would be the next price. Well here we're using a longitude as if it was a price low and we do the square root in the next rung what do we get? We get the next price high right here. The 67, 70, 68 is, is the top price right over here. So it is converting as equivalents, both a longitude as a price or a longitude becomes a future price. Also note, the final price was two times the origin longitude. So time and price are indeed equal and can be swapped. This would only occur if human beings are translating the movement of the planets into numbers and those numbers turn out to be the prices that they're trading every day. This subconscious uh, translation goes on each and every day in the minds of the traders and as the planets move and they reverse and they hit these highs and lows those are the key translations that turn out to be your major pivots. Another way GAN converted longitudes was mentioned in this course, and this discussion of trading U.S. Steel uh, I had in my Complete Stock Market Trading and Forecasting course. 
I explain this mysterious veil dialogue uh, this way because it confused me in my younger years when I got the GAN course. I read this over and over again. It didn't make any sense at all to me. So I'm going to explain it to you. He says, figuring $100 or par as the basis for stock prices and changing these prices to degrees, 12 and a half equals 45, 25 equals 90, 37.50 equals 135, 50 equals 180, etc. So he's basically saying $100 is the equivalent of 360 degrees. And one uh, eighth of, of $100, well, one eighth of 360 degrees is 45. One quarter, 25, is a quarter of 100, but one quarter of 360 is 90. And likewise, 50 is half of 100. It's half of the 360 is 180. And then it says when a stock sells at 50 on the 180th day, week, or month, it is on the degree of its time angle. Well, he's telling you time and price are equal. When it's on that angle, on the 180th day, and the stock is selling at 50, it equals 180, and time and price are squared, and you are to look for a trend. So he goes on to say, February 1st, 1915, U.S. Steel made a low at 38, which is the closest to a price of 37.50, which is three ace of 100, or three ace of 360 would be 135. And he's saying, he throws this in. You, I used to say, well, where's he getting this 135 angle from? We're talking about three ace of $100 and 38 bucks, and now he's talking about some angle. And he says steel was 14 years old or 168 months old on February 25th that year and it hit the angle of 135. So this is a key. He's talking about months here. And whenever he talks about months, he's talking about the planet Saturn. So we got to find out that Saturn has something to do with this 135 angle. He says this showed that steel was behind time. It should have been 168 divided by 360 which would have been something like $46, but it was only at 38. So it was behind time based on Saturn, but it was in a strong position because the angle apparently was 37.50 and it was above it. So let's see what he's talking about. So he, he does go on to say about the, the, the percentage. If you're using numbers, use 100 in the fractional parts of 100 are the same as a fractional parts of 360 for your longitudes. And he also mentioned uh, the, the February 1st uh, date because that was a date when the rulership of U.S. Steel Mars was changing sign. If you look it up in an ephemeris, you'll see Mars was changing sign on, on February 1st. And he would expect when the ruler changes sign of the zodiac, the steel stock would change direction. And he also, in the text, the 135 angle, uh, he was mentioning it was 168 months old. Well, note, that's the fixed cross is the, uh, the uh, odd squares. 169 is on the lower left-hand corner fixed cross of the square of 9. And when Saturn comes around and hits that fixed cross, you expect a major trend. Well, that date he referred to, Saturn and Uranus, made a 135 degree angle. So now we're seeing that he's using aspects between the various rulers as numbers where he's going to buy or sell stocks. So here's the calculation for late January 2015. If we throw in Saturn and Uranus as a pair, we find out on January 25th, approaching the 1st of February, where Mars was going to change sign anyway, Here's the angle of 135, and he's translating that angle of 135 into 3750. So he's using this as if it's a trend line uh, of the uh, longitude of the planets. And as long as it's above that trend line, which would have been 3750 price, uh, the stock would be in a bullish position. Here's a letter of Gans on the May uh, Santa Domingo coffee. And he's showing you just don't always use a one point to one point uh, conversion. Here we have a simple one point to one degree 
uh, and he's using coffee prices here and pennies and stuff at 87.29 so it's it's like uh, it would be uh, uh, 87 29 uh, divided by uh, 360 is equal to now 24 cycles of 360 but we're not worried about each of uh, the 360 360 360 so we're going to subtract those 24 cycles and just keep the leftover so the leftover of 360 is equivalent of times 360 89 degrees left over and 89 is equal to 29 Gemini so you got 30 of Aries 30 of Taurus a 60 and 29 over so 29 Gemini is equal to 1.1 degree in the price of coffee but sometimes it would respond to different units so he's trying well what if we do 30 points per degree so then we can go down here and we can say okay 87 29 87 29 divided by and he's saying let's use 30 points per degree 30 points would be equal to 291 291 is Capricorn it starts the uh, the tenth house so now nine houses times 30 degrees is 270 and this is 21 later so it's 21 Capricorn so at 30 points is one of his scales then he has a uh, scale of 12 points so then we can see how is he getting this 12 points 87 29 87 29 divided by the 12 points per unit gives us 727 but it's above 360 so we want to subtract 360 and it's still above 360 so we subtract another 360 and we get 741 uh, or 730 areas it would be 750 basically it's not quite 730 areas uh, uh, but that's what he's doing here he's taking the, at one center degree all he's doing is basically moving the decimal point one center degree is taking this and moving the decimal point and he gets uh, uh, 8729 so 87 would be 30 and 60 Aries Taurus 27 of Gemini 29 or 30 minutes more would be 16 Gemini and then he uses a dollar example remember before he said if you use dollars use 100 or par instead of 360 so now on the 100 equals 360 he's taking the 28,161 value of the contract of coffee he's dividing it out and he's getting 281 which is uh, 270 is the end of Sagittarius so Capricorn is 11 and 71.75 would be three quarters here 1145 Capricorn so he's using these various uh, points of 30 and 12 and 1 and dollar amounts and once he finds the translation uh, he'll find the planet which is located at 730 Gemini or 29 Gemini or 21 Capricorn or 2716 Gemini he's doing this to look up what planet is there what angle is that degree between two planets and once he finds it he will find the key to trading coffee because now all he has to do is move those planets forward take the degrees they are and translate it backwards by these units to get the price coffee will be in the future because time and price are connected and they're always equal now a lot of questions I get always relate to currency conversions because far too many of you get suckered into trading currencies a lot I suspect you don't have enough money to trade stocks and they uh, hook you by saying for a thousand dollars down you can trade a hundred thousand worth of uh, currencies but you know it's just a license to steal by the brokers it's very hard uh, trading currencies with all the news items and the ups and downs and forcing you to liquidate every day but if you are going to play that game um, the currencies are like the uh, you can trade a number of things you can move the decimal points as if it was a dollar contract or you can do it in fractional parts of 360 you have to experiment a little different currencies have different conversions so here would be a first attempt at the euro dollar 
from the high over here, 1.25542 times 360 would be about 452 degrees. Now I could reduce that to 360, but I'm just going to use the moon moving 452. So from that high, the moon moved 452. He moved it again here. He moved it again there. Moved it there. And many of these are pretty good hits. And it's just simple moon moving by this fundamental frequency of the high price. But we can see this is a big liquidating trend that continues to this day. Uh, when you're in a big liquidating trend, you're not going to find big major reversals on a small chart like this. Usually the thing that's driving them is some major planet from back several years ago. So you really want to look at a longer term chart to find this out. So here we see the same chart on a weekly basis. So we can go back several years now, one, two, three, four, five years or more. And we have the high spike here, and it is 1.39. And we do that same type of conversion to get 503.90. And I'm just trying it with the sun and Mars. So I moved the, the sun 504 degrees on a weekly chart, and it nails the high, and you get a big crash down. Then I move Mars from that spike, and we get the exact low week. And then the second cycle of the sun comes out to the secondary bottom. And then the next cycle of the sun isn't that big, but it's still three weeks sharply down compared to what's been going on. Same thing for Mars here. Reverses straight down again. So usually you'll be able to find out what the rulerships are. In this case, it looks like Mars is very active. I'd want to do more with that, and I'd want to do some pairs with Mars. Mars and uh, Uranus or Mars and Saturn and try the various pairs to see if they hit these points better. And go back over 10, 20 years, if you can, with several major highs and lows, convert the prices, and see if you can't get a common denominator number that will move your planets and hit almost all the, the uh, targets you need to hit, and thereby find out what's, what, what to use when trading that stock or commodity. Now, to get time and price squared or equal, I was saying you needed an accurate trend line or a planetary trend line. Well, you can also use my JTTL, which I uh, revealed in the Secret Science book. And it's in a trend line based on the square of nine. So that's what this was on this chart of Tesla. I kept showing it in my newsletter month after month after month and just upgrading each of these intersections. So from the low, you want to square out the vertical high. But the first one you can square out is this low distance. This, too, is a time and price equality. From the low, this distance here can be squared out when it hits your trend line. And that gives you the high over here. And then the secondary one over here squares out right over here. And the big top over here squares out right here with the big top right there. So every little turn here is a different range along this trend line, which is over so much and up so much from the origin point, and time and price will be equal at each and every one of these things, guaranteeing a reversal in trend. Now, when I did this last one, I said the next big turn, and it was fairly significant. There was one over here, and it was going to hit over here, and it was going to hit over here, and that would be on December 10th. Well, if you look up this chart, you'll see it went up like a rocket ship right back to the high tick in history on December 10th. And then it crashed and went right off the page. So when you square the various ranges on a good trend line, you will always get reversals in the market. That's time and price are squared. So here's one last example. I call it a perfect example. It's from the, again, Astro Volume 1. I was talking in that how bonds work very well with one degree Uranus. Almost all the highs and lows are just simple one degree Uranus moves. But from the major top uh, over in here, uh, uh, the price was 88.90. I mean, not, not bonds, but the uh, US dollar. Uh, 88.90 was the price. And I put on a 4 by one GAN angle of Uranus. And we can see it's hitting it and respects it. And what you will usually know when you have a good planetary trend line, it will start to bounce around it. And um, so it means you're coming up to a time and price squared, but it hasn't actually squared out yet. It's focusing into a point. 
and right on the low day we find out the angle between Uranus and Pluto from the high starting here and moving that angle forward the angle is now 8870 which is equivalent to the 8890 between the high low range and close on that day so the angle between Uranus and Pluto is equal to the top price on the low priced day but also Saturn had moved 1646 which is the exact same as the price drop from 8890 if you take off the 1646 you come right back down to the 70 something price that was on the low so the difference was the Saturn movement and we had Saturn was 135 Neptune on this date so we're having all these various planets and distances moved and vertical drops and angles between the planets they are all equal at the major highs and lows in history and that's when you get these big things that go up for another three four five years or so before they square out again most of the little things we've been looking at will square out this high or square out this low and they're great trades but when everything comes together and you get three four five of the big planets and they've all moved the exact same proportion in the movement they're following a trend line and even this trend line comes down and it's going to square this low too right over in here someplace then you get your major changes in trend so to summarize here we find that longitude numbers are converted into prices people subconsciously feel the planets moving and they convert that distance into prices prices are also reduced to numbers within 360 we do it backwards if we find a price of a thousand subtract 360 360 and we get a leftover we can use various scales like one degree per degree or, or 12 points per degree 30 per degree or maybe some oddball number if something was seventeen dollars for a low maybe you want to try 17 per degree um, these longitudes can be from individual planets or they can be angles of pairs of planets they can also come from various coordinate systems they can be geocentric degrees heliocentric degrees right ascension or sidereal so you do have to play around a little bit but once you find out which is working it will work forever on that commodity so even though you may have to spend three four hours one afternoon trying these various systems once you have it you'll have it your whole life square outs are at the dates on either fixed longitude numbers that are equal to the price or movement distances of those longitude numbers so if you were at a th uh, if you were at a price of uh, uh, 87 you might move 87 degrees or you might go to the day of the year when the longitude is like 87 which would be like the first day of summer almost which is 90 degrees on June 20th uh, planetary trend lines are an easy way to visualize the square rot you start at a low you draw a planetary trend line going up and when that trend line intersects the high you've squared the range so those are very simple that's why again on all his charts you'll see he's got these long-term planetary lines that go three four five six years and all he has to do is look at the price scale on the right side and see where the trend line is and he knows that's the number of degrees the planet has moved up from zero so he can very quickly see that number of degrees and see if it's related to any prices so longitudes also create natural barriers of support and resistance if a, 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 line, a high was on uh, 290 we can add every 290 degrees up and and that will be support and resistance but the big thing is longitudes will equal price and when they do this is where the reversals occur so this is GAN's time and price are equal or they are square and when they are square it is the fundamental thing you will get a reversal in the market every time if you do it right so if you want to find more information on this you get my 11 books and courses you can read about my personal seminars both here in New York City or on Skype around the world uh, the previous uh, YouTube videos uh, or on my website so uh, I thank you for listening and I hope you enjoyed it